Uh, this is the third example of how to determine the frequency response of, a, of electrical circuits using the impedance method. Um, so in this case I have a resistor in series with a capacitor and an inductor which are in parallel. Um, the output in this case will be V out will be equal to V in um, by the impedance of the capacitor in parallel with the inductor all over the impedance of the capacitor in parallel with the inductor plus the impedance of the resistor. Okay. Uh, so what I'm going to do first of all is calculate um, the impedance of the capacitor in parallel with the inductor. Um, that will be equal to um, the product over the sum. So the product will be uh, J omega L by 1 over J omega C all over J omega L um, plus 1 over J omega C and let's see that's going to be equal to um, might multiply above and below by J omega C looks like the easiest thing to do and that would be J omega L all over um, 1 minus omega squared C L okay. um, so that's that expression there I'll just box that off. I will substitute this into this expression here. So that would that would give me just continuing on this over here will give me V out is equal to V in um, by J omega um, J omega L all over 1 minus omega squared CL all over J omega L all over 1 minus omega squared CL um, plus R because ZR will of course be R. Now simplifying that a bit I could multiply by 1 minus omega squared CL not absolutely necessary. That that is well. That's not the frequency response, of course. I need to bring the Vn. I might just bring that across. And this expression here is now my frequency response. So that's my frequency response now. If I bring Vn across equal sign. Um, but it looks a bit messy. I'm just thinking about simplifying the expression by multiplying one minus omega squared CL and if I do that I'll get frequency response H of omega will be equal to J omega L all over J omega L plus um, or minus omega squared or L C. Okay, thanks for your attention.